Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which are quick and easy completed series that you can read for the Continuathon coming up. Those of you who may have missed my announcement video, I am again hosting the Continuathon this year. It is a two-week readathon in the month of April, focused on reading series, continuing series, catching up on series. This includes duologies, trilogies, and you know quartets. This also includes companion novels as well. So if you are a romance reader and your favorite author has a bunch of books in the same universe that are companions but not necessarily you need to read one after another. Those also count. If you are interested, I will have the announcement video linked down below for the two weeks in April. So go ahead and check that out. And hey, while you're down there, feel free to subscribe too. I have looked at my shelves and looked at all the series and duologies and trilogies that I have and I've come up with a list of series that I think you can fly through pretty quickly in two weeks, whether it's because they're short or they were they really drew me in, so I was able to read them quickly, so I think you would be able to read them quickly. These are also all completed series for the most part. There's only one on here that might not be completed, but it's it's more of a companion, and so if you like catch up with everything that is out. I would consider that completed. We are going to start off with the duologies. If you like banter and romance, but also fantasy and adventure, and you're getting into the mood for some summer reads, I would recommend The Daughter of the Pirate King duology by Trisha Levenseller. They're two pretty short books, and they hooked me in very quickly, and they did not let me go. I'm pretty sure I read each book within a day, so I was able to spend only two days on these, and the only reason I wasn't able to finish them in a shorter amount of time was because I had gotten the audiobooks and I had to wait for the audiobook for the second book from my library. But yeah, these are short. They, they move so quickly. Again, the banter between the characters, just I could not put these books down. And they're really great to get into the summer mood because it's Pirates and Daughter of the Siren Queen. This would be a great one to start off with. Next up, if you're more into mythology style fantasy adventure books, I would then recommend The Blood of the Stars duology by Elizabeth Lim. So again, it is another duology that's fairly short, but this is kind of Mulan meets Project Runway. You have your main character who is a tailor, but she isn't allowed to really kind of own her own shop. It's quite sexist in that way. Um, but she dresses up as a boy in order to enter the tailor competition for the emperor. And then that's like the first half of the book. And then the second half of the book is an adventure and it's really cool. And then it continues on into the second book. Again, I read these very quickly. I thought the mythology was so fascinating to read about. And again, they're short, so this would be another duology that I would highly recommend to pick up if you haven't already. Elizabeth Lynn does have another duology. The books are quite a bit thicker, but they captured me so much. It's the Six Crimson Cranes duology, so they're not on the list, but just thought I'd mention it because if you did already read and enjoy Spin the Dawn, then maybe look into Six of Cranes because Six Crimson Cranes, because if you liked Spin the Dawn, you're gonna love Six Crimson Cranes which is another completed duology. Now these next ones may look a little more intimidating, but that is because they are tall and hardcover. But don't worry, the print is fairly big. So I recommend The Crown's Game and The Crown's Fate. This is by Evelyn Skye. And this is kind of Night Circus meets Russia. Basically, you have these two magicians who are kind of pitted against each other secretly to see who will become the next enchanter slash right-hand man of the Tsar. And with the war between the Russia and the Cossacks potentially coming to light, the Tsar is in need of a new advisor and especially a powerful enchanter by their side. So it is a competition throughout these two books 
um, between a boy and a girl of who will become the enchanter for the Tsar. They're not actually that long. Um, if you like competition books, I think you will fly right through these. Now the final duology is one I'm going to recommend, but I don't own the second book, so it's just putting that out there. But if, again, you're really into fantasy and adventure, like I am, uh, read Blade of Secrets and Master of Iron by Trisha Levenseller. I know it's another Trisha Levenseller duology, surprise, surprise, but um, when I bought this book, it was a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. And Master of Iron isn't that much longer. I mean, it's a little bit longer, but not that much. You have a main character who is a blacksmith, a magical blacksmith, but with pretty bad social anxiety. And she ends up making this weapon for who ends up being a warlord. And she's like, this weapon is way too powerful. I can't give it to this warlord. So she and her sister and a couple other people kind of go on the run and figure out what to do to keep this magical sword out of the warlord's hand because she can't destroy it. Like that's, that's not a possibility here. So I loved this one so much. The representation was amazing. The characters were so good, but I'm a plot driven reader and I loved this so much. So if you need like a good, well-rounded fantasy world and a good duology that you're going to finish in two weeks, Blade of Secrets for sure. All right, next let's move on to trilogies. I have just a few trilogies here to recommend. The first one has been all over booktube, so I won't spend too much time on it, but it is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. I flew through this series so quickly. Again, it was another like reading a book a day type situation where I just could not put it down. Um, the first book is YA, the second and third are definitely adult and adult romance in that lots of smutty scenes, but that's honestly why I got through it so quickly, probably because I, I loved them. I loved them. So I think that's why I was able to read through it. So if you like fantasy romance and you haven't picked this up, just, just pick it up. You won't regret it. It really does live up to the hype. So, okay, that's all I'm going to say on that one. Now, if you like puzzles and mystery, rich families with a little bit of drama, then if you haven't picked up this trilogy, you definitely should. It has a companion book that just came out. I would say you can read just the trilogy and say it's a series completed or a trilogy completed. I, I, you don't have to read the companion to fit that, but that series is the Inheritance Games or the uh, Hawthorne Legacy trilogy. I only have the first two books here, the Hawthorne, or the, the Inheritance Games, the Hawthorne Legacy, and the Final Gambit. It's red fun, but this just kept me on the edge of my seat throughout the whole book. What was going to happen? Who did what now? Wh how is that coming to light? Oh my word, who is this person? All that being thrown at you when you have this girl who lives with her sister and they're kind of struggling to get by. She gets told that she is actually the sole inheritor of the Hawthorne family estate and basically fortune and business and just all of that. And so she's like this random rich family who she seemingly has zero connection to has left her every, the grandfather has left her everything in his will and he just passed. So she goes on down to Texas and the hook is, is that she inherits everything if she lives in the house for a year. So lots of family drama, lots of secrets to uncover. The house itself is full of so many fun puzzles and twists and turns. So if you haven't read this and you want a good like mystery trilogy to read during the continuathon, this I would say is a pretty good one to, to start off with. And then the last trilogy that I'm going to recommend to you goes back to it being a mythology based fairy tale trilogy and that is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. So this trilogy, I read it fairly quickly but that's because it's short. You know, these three books are not very long. It has very lyrical, beautiful writing, which isn't per se my type of thing. It would actually slow me down. But if that is something that you enjoy, you love 
like the beautiful descriptions and storytelling, then this would probably be a good trilogy for you to pick up. Um, again, it is Russian folklore. You are following this girl who her mother passes and she kind of gets in touch with like the Snow King-esque kind of character. Like I pictured just like Jack Frost. Um, <laughs> and she just kind of lives her life and does what she wants to. And I don't even know how to describe. She just, she just goes through life and living almost as a fairy tale. This would be a fun trilogy to pick up, I would say. Now I have only one series recommendation and it's actually a series of companion novels and this is for all of my romance readers and if you've been following my channel for a while you know I am obsessed with this series and you also might know that it does actually have a companion book coming out. So it's a series of companion novels. And there's gonna be more coming, but they're not out yet. So that's why I'm saying it's completed because if you, I'm more so using this as an example of if you are catching up on a series and you complete everything that's out, I would consider that you completed a series, unless it's one book, okay? If you read like one book of a duology, that does not count, no. But anyway, so the series I have to recommend the Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. So I actually have books one, two, three, and five. I do not have book four yet, which book one and book four are my favorites. Um, but yes, The Bromance Book Club, Undercover Bromance, Crazy Stupid Bromance, and goodness, A Very Merry Bromance. And then the fourth one is um, Isn't It Bromantic? I absolutely adore, adore these books. I read them so quickly and I actually just did a reread of the bromance book club just the first one and I read it in a day and I still loved it I still rated it five out of five stars so if you don't know what I'm talking about this is follows a group of men typically professional athletes or there's a country singer or you know slightly famous men kind of more well-known richer men who read romance novels to better their relationships with their girlfriends, fiancés, and wives. And it's amazing because they are breaking down toxic masculinity and just, I just can't even, because it's, it's hilarious. It's a very funny series to read, but it's also like meaningful and heartwarming and challenging all wrapped up into one contemporary romance and it is adult so just so you know adult romance contemporary this would be a really good one to read and those are all the recommendations i have for you today if you like this video give it a thumbs up comment down below if you are participating in the continuous on again i will have the announcement video link down below because i did make quite a few changes from last year so make sure you watch that to get all of the changes explained and so you can have access to the badge documents and everything like that. While you're down there, feel free to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified. I post twice a week, typically on Sundays and Wednesdays. And then also have bookish social media linked down below where I post things on Instagram and whatnot and you can keep up with what I'm reading there as well. So. Again, thank you all very much for watching, and until I see you in the next video, I wish you happy reading!